one really famous paper is called Fully Convolutional Network. It is a work from 2017 by Jonathan, Ivan, and Trevor. Again, this is my personal reading note. What I'm trying to do is to bring you the high level summary of this paper. And if you want to go deeper into this paper, uh, by the way, it's been cited cite, uh, 20,000 times. So this is a really famous paper. If you want to go deeper into that, please click the link and then you can go through the paper by yourself. So let's get started. For the FCN, Fully Convolutional Network, it's not the, the, the FPN, okay? It's not a feature pyramid network. It's called FCN. And there's a really few things you need to understand is the first is its architecture allows it can take arbitrary size as input. And this is very important because you think about during that time frame, right? 2014, 2015, 2016, what you have is like uh, VGG and ResNate and this kind of architecture. And they have um, a limitation of they can only take um, fixed size as input because they have this fully connected layer fully connected layer don't mix the term fully connected layer and fully convolutional network here so this fully connected layer later we will talk about that that is just you need to do some some after you do a bunch of uh, convolution operations you have this flatten operation then that would be a 1d dimension and that 1d dimension is exactly uh, the point a lot uh, restrict that the architecture can take arbitrary size of input it can only take fixed size Okay, so what fully convolutional network doing here is it's um, you use a different architecture. Later we'll talk about that, and it allows it to take arbitrary size as input. That's a very important point. The second point is about the uh, it use a techniques called transpose convolution, or you can you you probably heard about that for deconvolution, and that's uh that's also um it's an upsampling approach to enable that this architecture can can um, de decode the, the architecture back to the original resolution. Later when we show the image, you probably will have more um, understanding what I'm talking about here, but just this is a summary um, page. So the third thing is about the skip connection. Okay, and this fully convolutional network is trying to do the pixel-wise segment, uh, semantic segmentation work means that each pixels it wants to identify which class it belongs to and that is uh, that is a different thing compared to the previous work probably we have in the resonate or vgg what we're trying to do is a classification work means given that image please tell me it's a dog or a cat right but in the se semantic segmentation work what it's trying to do is each pixel i want to know it's a it's belong to a door dog or it's belong to a door or it's belong to a sky or it belong to a pedestrian so it's a pixel wise semantic segmentation each pixel need to have a class that's a huge difference okay so the first thing we're gonna jump into is the architecture so the traditional uh, convolutional neural network architecture you can see is like here we using the uh, menest um, data set like a uh, handwrite digits and then it's a bunch of convolution operations, right? We call this encoding uh, encoder because that encode kind of information because when you do this convolution, what you're trying to do is you you um, lower the you lower the spatial um, dimensions, which means you 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 using either convolution or using either pooling layers to reduce the high and width of your image. But at the same time, you increase your feature map size. That's why this uh, dimensions goes up. Um, you can see here uh, the high and width is going down, but the the depth, or we call the channel channel size, or the feature map numbers is increasing. And once you increase into a certain number, as we said before, usually you use this flatten operations to flat that whole things that whole 3d structure into 1d right so this 64 times 7 times 7 will be 3136 here so that is exactly what i'm saying it's a 1d structure which contains the all the information you have before for this 3d information and then you have here is this fully connected layer and once you have a fully connected layer then you can link to the final for example the number of 
classes you want to have as a last layer. In this case, because this is a digits, we want to have from zero to nine. So we want to recognize these 10 classes here. Okay, so this is a normal, I think this is from Alex Snake uh, architecture. And what we talked about before is this kind of traditional CNN architecture exactly limits um, the input size. Why I'm saying that? Because when you train this model, right, what you're trying to do in the, in the CNN training is you have a bunch of filters and you're trying to um, adjust those weights for the filters and make sure the filters is recognized the, exactly the numbers you want. And then you have this fully connected layer to chain up all the information together, but you have the fixed size here. So the fixed size here is exactly cause um, the limitation that you your input image can be only 28 times 28. Because if you given a different number, let's say 56 times 56, and then you give that input number and you already have a training model, right? We are doing some um, inference during the time you already have the train model. And now you fit in a different input size image, let's say 56 times 56. And when you go through those operations, then what would be the output here? Would be 64 times 14 times 14. Why? Because you have double size here. So then this cannot link to the size here. This will be uh, two times bigger than this number. So the whole weight is not, you, you cannot calculate now. So the, the program will crash, right? Because you exactly have the bottleneck here. So this is a traditional architecture has the bottleneck because of the fully connected layer. And what um, you can you can cartoonize uh, into this diagram, right? Um, probably this is a different architecture, but you understand what I mean. You have the input image, which is at the at the moment the depth information here. We only see the depth information is three, right? Because it's RGB image. And go inside. You increase your depth information. At the same time, you reduce the width and the height. That's a bunch of convolution, ReLU, or pooling layers you're gonna execute here. So your feature map size increase but your spatial dimension decrease. And at the end, you have this flattened um, operation. So you go into 1D and then you connect to the final classes you want to classify. In this case, there's 1000 classes because it's an image net um, um, data set. So you have 1000 compared to the minness, you only want to have 10 in the end. So this is um, another cartoonized way to represent the traditional CNN architecture. Okay, so this is a traditional one. We want to modify that to, to uh, eliminate the constraint of we need to have a fixed input size. What we want is, I want to have a di different input size. I want to give it 50 times 50 and it can still work. So how can we do that? Um, so let's jump a little bit back to what is fully convolutional network and what what it wants to achieve okay so the fully convolutional network is when you give in an image comes in and then of course you pass in through this encoder part which is normal convolutional network so it's exactly the same here right exactly the same here but we're not talking about the fully connected layer yet so it is exactly the same patterns you do in the convolution you do in the relu you do in the pooling and then this is the key here. Instead of flatten it, instead of flatten it, you use one times one uh, dimensions in the spatial dimension, but the depth dimension can be before the same 1000 or um, 10 here, like the minus data set or ImageNet data set, you have 1000. So given that, just later we will, talk, we will describe that more. And then what you want to do is now you want to scale it back to the original image dimensions, right? Because you you want to uh, what we want to do now is a semantic segmentation. Remember, we want each pixel has a class. So then we of course need to uh, resize back to the original image, right? So how we doing that is we we calling this is called decoder part. It's actually doing what it's doing is upsampling, right? You're trying to enlarge your spatial dimension back to the original spatial dimension here. 
and then you can do a classification for each pixels here because you back to the original 224 times 224 size here. So you can tell there contain few parts for the, this is the whole pipeline for, for the convolutional network. So actually it's composed with three parts, exactly the three parts I, I, I'm saying at the be beginning of this presentation, what you what I want to bring you the high level summary. summary. The first one is the convolutionization, right? Remember that we have traditional convolutional network. We have this kind of architecture as I showed before in the image, you are doing the operation of convolution and then you flatten that into 1D. But instead of now doing this, we are using approach, just modify them. We don't use the flatten. We just using the one times one times D. The D is the death, uh, the death um, channel, or you can say it's the, it's a number of feature maps. So in this case, exactly the same. You just make it into one times one times four thousand zero ninety six. Exactly the same here, but you are not using flatten you're not using a 1d dimension you're still using 3d dimension just they are one times one times 1000 in the end right and this 1000 in the end is exactly the same as your image net what you want to have for the 1000 output but you just contain them into a 3d form but they are still 1000 um, so so then you can what you can do is you can take those per pixel uh, information here the weight information and then you can classify potentially back to the what is this pixel classes here because you have this 1000 classes and you can say hey this pixel belong to the cat this pixel belong to the sky for example so this is just the one the first part you can see i cut it here okay you're doing the normal convolution instead of doing the flatten you are doing the still 3d so but just one times one times the depth or the feature map and then in the end you just one times one times the number of classes you want to achieve here okay that's the first part the second part is the convolution the convolution what it what it's trying to do is just upsampling so from what you want to achieve here is to resize back to the original image resolution so we're using a, a, a techniques called the convolution so the convolution just enlarge your image size back to the original image. And then later we'll talk about the detail for that. So the final thing is, the final thing is you can imagine a bit, right? Let's try to guess a bit when you have this such a small dimension size, a small spatial dimension um, information and you're trying to enlarge them. Of course, you will lose some information, right? Because how can you from one times one and up to seven times seven? Of course, you do some uh, interpolation, right? When you do interpolations, we talk about before in the our FPM uh, paper video. I will put on the description below. There is an aliasing effect. So what we want to um, to how how can we mitigate this aliasing effect when you do interpolation? Is you can actually take um, the let's say the finer informations before and to add them together. So you just take the original image before what you what you are doing during the encoder part, you remember that information and you now you add them back because they contains the original information more than what you're trying to do here. So you just take the previous information and add them to your the same uh, um, spatial dimensions that will be matched them and just add them together. Later, it's more complicated than that, but just a simplify image is this skip connection here. So this is a three part we want to talk about in this paper. First, the convolutionalization. I, you all, I, I'm ready to talk about this, and you should know this. Later, we'll talk about the convolutions and the skip connection. So yeah, um, so the first part, the convolutionizations, what it does is, as I said, you take the instead of taking the flatten, you are using a 3D dimension still, but just one times one times D. And this D they are using is the classes you want to classify in the end. So depending on your problem, if you want to do the minus, you want to make it 10 in the end. If you want to do image net, 
you will do 1000 in the end okay right and th by by having that by having that is exactly the key you can take arbitrary image size as input because you are no longer constrained by the flatten operation now you are all about um convolution so you can take different size now comes in they they will still follow the same size because you will just take from the big for example if it's bigger then they will just lose more information when it comes to here because they go down to one times one times d okay so the second part or the third uh, section three of this presentation is about the deconvolution is called also called transpose convolution and what transpose convolution do is actually exactly the same what you what you what you do for the um, convolution operations convolution operation you, you have you have um, filter and you have the the feature map and you go through the feature maps and generate output usually when you have a strike number increasing uh, or when you didn't do padding or depending on your feature map size you can alert the different spatial information this is just a, the most basic knowledge of convolution and you just using a reverse way of doing that so um, for example in this example here you can see the input size now is smaller right you have a smaller input size and how can you make it bigger so you take a filter and this filter can also be learned that's very important this filter we, we don't want to f in the convolutional of uh, um, fashions we're trying to learn m to n right so we want all the filter can be learned by back propagation so this filter you can initialize them using interpolation by interpolation different techniques you can use here but once you initialize them, then you can use just the same as a convolution. Um, you can see here the final output here, this part three times three output in the final part here is just you take the filter and you times one for all this um, uh, information here. And then you go to the four corresponding to the size here. So you just enlarge from original input size is smaller and then output size is bigger and there is a mathematic way you can calculate that i just want to tell you the intuition here but usually when you do the coding you can just code the function here you just need to understand that when you're using a transpose convolution it just comes from the small input and become larger output okay and you can check the example by yourself you can change that it's exactly the same as a convolution but you can also you can do change the stride number you can change the path number and then the, the output size will be different okay so that's how you enlarge um, back to the original uh, image size so when we, we talk about that um, when you're trying to from a very small spatial information and you're using the deconvolution trying to enlarge them back to the original input size you somehow lost the information because the previous information you go down during the encoding process which is normal convolution process you already lost a lot of information and you're trying to decode that information of course you you cannot retain back the information so you need to use a technique called skip connections which is retain the information from the finer previous information to the coarser information so here is just um it's a little bit complicated here let me walk you through this so if you look at this this is the original input resolution okay so that's that's imagine this is 32 uh, this is 32 um times 32 so there is a 32 pixels 32 pixels in a x axis and y axis and during each pulling layer you just reduce two right you just become 16 times 16 and then you do another pulling layer it become 8 times 8 and 4 times 4 2 times 2 1 times 1 so this is the coarsest information and what it do is exactly here you're going down to the dimensions and now you have pretty small resolution here so what you can do now is you can take this one the the smallest information here you can directly assembling them 32 times or 224 times in this case right 
you can immediately back to the original image size and do the classification here. But 100% you can imagine that this information will be super bad, right? So if you take that directly and do a um, prediction, you can take that output and do the prediction. Here, probably you need to check my the other video FPN. So you can you can do a prediction on the different layers of the output, right? Um, I will put that um, video in the link below. You can check that. So you can take this 32 upsampling version from the, the course's information directly upsampling 32 times back to the original input size now, right? This is the original input size. And you can imagine that this probably will be a really bad result because you lost too much information. And when you do the upsampling here, it, even though you can learn that uh, filter weights there, but still uh, you lost too much information. So what you can do now is, for example, you have the final, the coarsest information means the last layer, right? And you can times two, you can upsampling two times and they are the same size, right? They are exactly the same size as pulling layer four, two times two. So you can add them up together. You can add these two together. So they kind of like combining information in these two layers. And when you combine this information with two layers, uh, because you understand the nature of convolution is here contains, even though it's a coarser, but it contains the higher semantic information than this one, right? So if it's a dog, this could be a shape of the nose, of dog's nose, and this could be a whole image of the dog because that contain higher semantic information. So when you are sampling that and add them together, actually what you do is like in FPN, you take the lower, you take the higher semantic information, add them up with the lower semantic information. When you add them up, you still need to up you need to up sampling them. You need to do the uh, deconvolution back to the original 32 times 32. Then you can do a pixel wise classification. That's what we want to do, right? So this is one way you can do, or you even up sampling them into uh, four times four, right? Four times four, and then you can add them up with this layer together. So you can see that this AX upsampling because you from four times four back to original 32 times 32, you upsampling eight times. You just look at this eight. This is um, this AX, which the output is still 32 times 32, but it contains the previous information from here and also the information from here, right? So you leverage this final output, you actually leverage these three layers together. So you can imagine that this will contain higher semantic information, a little bit lower, but still higher than this one, right? And then this information. So um, so we can, we can kind of guess that this will be the better output. And the conclusion that I want to show you is exactly this is the AX result. So you can see the rightmost part here is the ground truth. This is the semantic information what we want to have. You can understand this is a uh, bi bike and this is a biker, right? So if you're using this, remember this 32X one directly from the most layer, upsampling them back to the original image, you can see you lost kind of like those finer detail information of the, the, you can understand there is a bike, you can understand there's pedestrian, but you don't, you lost that location information of the, the, the handle of your bike, right? So if you're using a, a better approach to combine the different layers, these last three layers together, actually your output will be much, much precise because you you retain back the location information and then you can see from the um, the KPI here is using the the mean IU you can see the mean IU here is it's higher um, using the a, AX um, approach so this is my final slides um, so let's try to recap a bit what convolution uh, fully convolutional network does is it bring up like three benefits, right? The three benefits is it can take arbitrary size as input. Why? Because it has, it, it doesn't use the uh, flatten approach. 
it's used uh, one times one times d okay and it used upsampling to to um rescale back your decoder information back to uh, original size right because during your encoding you you go down the spatial resolutions and you want to enlarge them back to the original uh, resolutions and that is the upsampling part and is used the deconvolution or transpose convolution and the third thing is you're trying to combine uh, the the different semantic information using these skip connections to retain the final information for localization information and the last thing is it's used for uh, pixel wise semantic segmentation so each pixel has a class and the idea for that is to to have this pixel wise classification that's all for this paper thank you